All right, in this video, I'm going to go over compound interest and how it relates to the S&P 500 uh, index funds. So I'm just going to show everybody what, this, what the rate of returns do in a span of 30 years or more. And I want to bring this point home because a lot of people don't fully understand just how adding a few more years earlier to your retirement investment makes a huge, huge difference. Okay, so here is the rate of return if you stuck in $10,000, the starting amount. You don't add anything to it after that. Now let's just say the starting amount could maybe mean, can probably be what you, you, you what you accumulate between ages say 18 and 27. Because this is a 40-year run, you hit f full Social Security benefits at 67, right? So let's just say that. Um, you're 27 in 1978. So let's just say this $10,000 was all saved up uh, from 1969 to 1978, and you don't stick anything in there later. That money over that 40 year period would be worth $603,423.59. Okay? That's off of, what does that say? $10,000. <laughs> That's just amazing. Um, yeah, I think you could probably retire on that, not adding anything after age 27. Okay, now let's go to, now let's shrink it down to 30 years. Well, 30 years, $10,000, not adding anything to it, would be worth $165,001.22. So still a pretty good amount higher than that $10,000 investment, but nowhere near this much. Okay. Now here's a hypothetical example. Here's a 30 year, you, stick, you start with $10,000, you add nothing to it for 30 years. 174,000, what does that compare to? Well, here you get 165,000. Let's add 10 more years to the 30. And here it's 452,000. So it's this for 40 years, this for 30 years. If it's just a straight, you know, if it goes in a straight line 10%, well, it's not in a straight line, but if it was perfectly at 10% a year, of course, the stock market does not go in a straight <laughs> exactly 10% a year. Okay, so then I want to, then people say, yeah, but you have to get out at the right time. Okay, let's, let's test that theory. So here I have $10,000 starting investment. We start in 1979. We end in March of 2009. That's when the stock market hit rock bottom, right? Well, that $10,000 would turn into $135,000. I mean, this, this is Let's find out how much 10,000 goes into, let's see, 1, 3, 5, 2, 4, 3, divided by 10,000. That goes in there 13 times. So all that money that you stuck in in 1979, let's just say you had all accumulated to this by 1979, and then you stopped, it would still be worth <laughs> this much. You know, then on top of that, if you stuck in $100 a month after that, look at that. You know, $200 a month is probably the optimal rate. And then you could probably call it quits in 2009 if you were 67, okay? There is no other investment, other alternative that you could have done this with. So I want to show everybody now. Let's turn this back to zero and let's... Or this is actually 30 years. Let's go. Let's go 40 years because that's really when you should start, right? You should. St so the point of this is to show you that 30 years you'll never lose money. But here's the optimal. Look at that. Ten thousand dollars. Be worth that 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 amount. And if you add a little bit to that each month, bingo, hundred dollars a month. So you have $10,000 at, that's age 27. So 37 would actually be, so, so 
you'd be probably 37 in 1979, so 27 in 1969. So you should have still worked um, nine years before this, at least, you know, 18, right? Right out of high school, maybe even 16. If you if you got it to ten thousand dollars by twenty seven and then a hundred dollars a month after that you'd, you'd be worth four hundred eighty thousand dollars over that in the worst part of the stock market crash okay so the bottom line is this is I hope this is a big emphasis to start investing early